Hi guys, Muslims all over the world have most probably heard the slogan, the fantastic claim, Islam is the fastest growing religion. The problem is that neither is Islam just a religion, but rather a political ideology, nor is it growing. Quite the opposite is the case, I'm afraid. Islam is in trouble and dying fast. The claim is sheer propaganda. Now, why would I say such a thing when it is so, well, so obviously wrong? Well, as usually, let, let me do what I usually do, okay? So let me look at the claim, analyze it, then try and match it with reality. So I'll look at the sources which would indicate a growth of Islam and then investigate why the opposite could be true and then demonstrate why either one is more likely and present a conclusion. So like this, everybody can make their own informed decision and decide for themselves whether they prefer emotion-based comfort or hard facts. Using Google and entering fastest growing religion, we get claims that Mormonism, Paganism, Jehovah's, Buddhism, Hinduism, Scientology and all sorts of belief systems and ideologies are all making the same claim. We are growing. By far the most hits are by Islamic sites claiming that all others are wrong and Islam is the ideology which is attracting the most followers. Now given that, that atheists or rather non-believers, the, the non-religion, the nuns, uh, nuns, not nuns, not nuns, are providing verifiable data which documents this growing segment, the above claims must be wrong. As not all groups, believers and nuns alike, can grow at the same time. So what number can we trust and well, where, where do these numbers actually come from? Now these tables show that Christianity as a whole is still pulling in believers. The site fastestgrowingreligion.com focuses on exactly this topic and provides sources, something you don't normally get from the proprietary religious pages. They get their material from the World Christian Encyclopedia and the CIA World Factbook. They see Islam behind Christianity and the nuns. Islam sites say the opposite. So looking at the Muslim favorite Wikipedia, we see that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. It's in the first paragraph. Why is that? Now, as always with Wikipedia, the, the footnotes are the more interesting area. On what do the authors of Wikipedia base their conclusion? Well, th these seem to change on a, on a monthly basis because last time it was a press agency, and now it's a publication, The List, which I have shown in a different videos. Muslims love misquoting. Then you have PBS, the broadcast company, and finally a report taken from US News in 2008, several years ago. Before following the link to the dedicated growth page, let's go to the reference pages first. The, the essay I found there last time around said Islam is the youngest, the fastest growing and in many ways the least complicated of the world's great monotheistic faiths and a summary of Islam painted in glowing colors. The source? No. It's a personal opinion. The people writing the Wikipedia article, they cheat. They provide links, master sources, which lead to propaganda articles. So everyone who has looked at Islam for more than a week knows it is neither the youngest nor the least complicated belief system. Maybe that is why they've removed it and looked for different justifications. The PBS source from 2007 also ends up in a propaganda article in a paper called Foreign Policy by a Qasem Zain, and not a source with any data. The foreign policy list from 2007 is not always accessible because they want you to pay to read why Islam is growing. <laughs> Hardly an accessible source. The attempt at reaching the press agency results in a 404 not found error. That's how sloppy these people work. I eventually got hold of it and found just a propaganda article without any data sources, precise figures. But don't worry, it gets worse, much worse. If you now click on the link for the fastest growing major religion in the world, you end up on an Islamic propaganda page. Now, what has magically appeared there within a few days is the addition percentage-wise. This wasn't there a couple of days ago. 
And if you if you want to get the sources for their claims, you'll be provided by an entry in the 2003 Guinness Book of Records, a page on foreign policy which is not accessible, and the well-known academic source CNN. But here again, when I rechecked, sources had changed. Now, the, the one source, the non-source, I should say, um, is, is the same that we had on the, on the previous page. How, how stupid do Muslims think the rest of the world actually is? How stupid do they think their own fellow Muslims are? The 2003 Guinness Book of Records? Uh, but going a bit further down, it actually gets quite hilarious. Here it's, it, it cites the BBC as a source. And then again, the 2003 Guinness Book of Records and the Pew Forum. The funny thing is, guess what the source is for the Guinness Book of Records? Yes, the, the Pew Forum. So the added source is a 2013 paper by Johnson and Grimm. The reference page 10 is quite a busy page with loads of numbers. What does it tell us? Well, it covers 100 years of religion and shows very clearly, if anything, that in the last 100 years, the biggest growth was for agnostics and atheists. Now, what I don't quite understand is that if a person is not sure a god exists, the, the agnostic, this means they, they don't really believe they exist and are thus atheists. Ah, but whatever. Anyway, so Muslims, according to this table, um, number one and a half billion in 2010 and have grown 1.8% a year between 2000 and 2010, closely followed by Daoists with 1.7%. What I don't see here is the data explanation, the source, the methodology applied to arrive at these figures. So, well, let's take a look at the only solid source they cite, the Pew Forum, which, funny enough, is less prominent than the last times I looked at these pages. Now, if we go and look at the Pew Forum, the page uh, I opened, they, they openly admit statistical data on conversion to and from Islam are scarce. What little information is available suggests that there is no substantial net gain or loss in the number of Muslims through conversion globally. The number of people who become Muslims through conversion seems to be roughly equal to the number of Muslims who leave the faith. Now, as a result, this report does not include any estimated future rate of conversions as a direct factor of the projections of Muslim population growth. So I don't know why people are using this as a source. Looking at the methodology employed, we find that they outsource the data gathering and processing. They use standard lists and then massage the data. This means wait. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? okay it, all it means is that you weight the numbers according to an algorithm they've developed to curb too much spread and allow for trend lines and, and error margins. These are further complemented by estimates, guesses, interpolation, and outside demographics until you arrive at a data spread which can be cross-checked against number of mosques and self-reported numbers. So, like this, you admit at a, at a well, an approximate and, and quite accurate guess. And they admit to this, and this is nothing new. But it's not accurate, especially if you have such small numbers to start off with. Like the Muslims in the US. I mean, they make up a whopping 0.6% of the, of the population. So, how do you count the number of Muslims in Yemen or Indonesia? You can't, so you estimate. So, these estimates... Um, the numbers they receive from individual mosques also represent what the Imam thinks. So it's his estimate. And this is what he would like to see. So the error bars here are huge. Now, I, I know what a huge effort it is to provide a single version of the truth within a large company and what is required from keeping individual divisions from slanting data to their own agenda. I see the telltale signs of huge discrepancies between reporting entities when it comes to something easy like the basic number of Muslims. Because I, I know this from, from a business world, I, I know the identifiers here and I see the signs. And as much as the, the Pew Forum makes their methodology look accurate and reliable, the underlying necessary assumptions belie that accuracy. Religion is not easily quantifiable. The person, I mean, if, if we're looking at, at uh, polls, for example, the person calling you will not check whether you are in front of the TV, the barbecue or the mosque. And numbers from Muslim majority countries really are vague guesses. 
Now, the religion census membership studies looks at congregations, members, adherents, and attendance. Now, how do you get attendance? You know, this is not something that you you get a you need to sign in into a roster or something like this. This is just pure sheer projection. They rely on self-reporting data and estimates, guessing. Some groups, such as the Mormons, count every visit or inquiry as an adherent to Mormonism, which inflates the numbers. The same goes for Scientology, where the numbers are artificially inflated using dubious practices which have been documented in the recent past. People leaving any group are not deducted, accounting for the reported ever-growing numbers. It's dishonest, but it leaves the followers with a the feeling they're part of a large group. So if they are being stupid, all the others are, then that makes you feel less stupid. And they said unto the Lord, how the hell did you do that? But it leaves a funny aftertaste and is reason enough to seriously doubt these claims. But, and this is a big but, I have to acknowledge all I'm doing is doubting the claims. I'm unable to disprove them because I have the same problem the people making these statistics have, lack of reliable data. I can only show that the claims don't make sense and that the data is unreliable and based on hunches and guesses. This would mean the deductions are based on emotions, not facts. So if I deduce something based on emotion or fact, what is the value of this? The, the, you know, what you have is the principle of the poison tree, which can't produce healthy fruit. But now, what about the opposite? What indications are there that Islam is not growing, but actually shrinking? Well, there's, there's different factors here, ranging from the least reliable, which is personal observations, where I notice the decline and bump into ex-Muslims much more frequently as time goes by, all the way up to reliable, self-confessed apostates, who admit they've been more atheists than Muslims. They were just going through the motions. Then you have converts, which are warmly greeted, I mean, even by Christian churches, uh, who, they, I mean, they're also witnessing a reduction of numbers and, it, more importantly, a sharp decline of what drives the most, money. The non-believers are offering the least, namely nothing except freedom and a productive mind, and are the group growing exponentially. And we see that converts don't last. Dr. Ilyas Bayuno says that 75% of new Muslim converts in the US leave Islam within a few years. Disillusioned. People's priorities shift from survival to self-expression values as their sense of individual agency increases. He also says that people's priorities shift from traditional to secular rational values as their sense of existential security increases. The large increase in individual agency occurs within the transition from industrial to knowledge societies. And the strongest emphasis on traditional values and survival values is found in the Islamic societies of the Middle East. But, and maybe I shouldn't have kept the worst until last, but the number one lie is that Islam is growing due to the high birth rates. Well, this bubble was also burst when new data appeared, which indicated that birth rates in the less developed Muslim majority countries have dropped dramatically. The, if you know, the old Arafat statement with Islamic wombs being the strongest weapons of Islam is proving to be just another dream and a failure. So that is where we stand. Muslim propaganda claiming a growth that can't be substantiated and which is based on shaky ground and the clear indications of the opposite, a decline of people who are prepared to stop thinking and ignore the facts presented on the internet. Primitive apologist groups still try and buy back believers with huge investments and efforts and are failing. Too many people now understand that a, a group like AIRA or LDM or whatever Tawa group you pick, people see that these are, they, they don't understand the world around them and just fabricate a creator or designer God. They don't understand science, the principles, the processes. They, they have no clue what an atheist is. I mean, even though I myself have patiently explained it to them many times. They, they apply dishonest censorship, thinking that you know, just keeping people quiet will somehow make it go away. Close your eyes, you can't see me. Anyway, they fabricate illogical and juvenile arguments. 
and apologists are realizing they don't have anything convincing. And even a, a Dr. Craig, who has spawned many Islamic clones, is now shaking when delivering his nonsensical drivel and was sent into retirement by Dr. Carroll recently, who completely annihilated all arguments or points that Dr. Craig had. Now, in, in Iran, for example, Muslim apologists are standing with their arms raised in despair and are starting to acknowledge it. This generation doesn't want the religious men who rule this country running their lives. They've had enough of the strict Islamic rules. 27 years of Islamic theocracy have left millions disillusioned. Life is good, but, but not uh, to any Iran. Government announced that such hairstyles would not be tolerated. And even Sunnis, like Tzotzis, are saying... Many people have left the religion of Islam because of the internet. And this paper the... specifically, there are people who actually left the religion as a result of reading this paper. Again. And throwing out more nets, like on a Dawah day, is, is futile, as the claims have too many and too big holes. People don't associate with Muslims any longer who are unable to condemn stoning or slavery if committed by fellow Muslims. More and more Arab atheists are raising their voices, no longer intimidated by their masters and shouting out the message, Islam is dying. This is my conclusion, based on the data that I have, which shows that the claims that Islam is growing are wrong. They don't exist. They are fabricated. And on the other hand, I have data which suggests that Islam indeed is dying. Thanks for your time.